Hi again, YouTube. It's that one guy in lit class, and today I'd like to talk to you about kinnings. At some point in your life, either in high school or college, you're probably going to run across the text Beowulf when you're studying English literature. It's one of the few surviving works from that time period in English literature, and as such, it's pretty common to read at least a section of it in class. And while Beowulf is a classic tale of a man trying to overcome various monsters that threaten his people, it has a few literary devices that readers may be unfamiliar with. The first of these, the caesura, or deliberate pause in the middle of a line of poetry, I discussed in my video on poetic devices. Today, though, I'd like to tackle the other big literary device used all the time in Beowulf and works like it, the kinning. By definition, a kinning is a metaphor created by putting two or more words together to rename a familiar thing or person in an unfamiliar way. A kinning is an example of a circumlocution, which is a roundabout way of saying something. And usually, a kinning is a combination of two, but sometimes more, words that when put next to each other create an interesting image. Often the two words are not related to each other to begin with, so when they are combined, they can cause readers or listeners to suddenly see a concept in a completely new light. To give you an example of this, in Beowulf, the sun is at one point referred to as, quote, the world candle. As you can see, the individual words, world and candle, don't really have anything to do with each other. But when they are combined, they form an image of this giant candle illuminating the world, which is a pretty neat way of thinking about the sun. My personal favorite kinning from the story comes from near the very beginning, when it describes Beowulf and his company sailing across the Hranrad, the Old English name for the Wales Road, a poetic way of referring to the sea. While kinnings are most well known from Old Norse and Old English poetry, that doesn't mean we don't still use them today. Any two-word metaphorical phrase that renames a person or thing in an unusual way can count as a kinning. Examples that you probably hear in everyday life include couch potato for someone lazy, brown noser for a person constantly sucking up to someone else, or even home wrecker for someone trying to steal your significant other out from under you. Like the kinnings in Beowulf, these are expressions that try to put someone or something in a new or unfamiliar light. And as you can hopefully see, this practice is still common enough in our language that modern kinnings are still completely valid ways of expressing yourself. So try it out. Come up with a kinning that renames your parents or your car or your teacher. Be creative and try and find a way of visualizing that thing that no one else has thought of before. As always, thanks for watching. Leave comments and questions down below. Cheers!